Hey folks, so uh, my name is Rob McDonald and uh, Albers and the folks from uh, the HQ and the championship have asked us to make a little video showing what we did for the first challenges. So here is, uh, here's the environment that I created and I'm going to take you through it uh, as quickly as possible to show you what it was that I had done. So for the first uh, challenge, which was the uh, interactivity challenge, uh, my main objective was to create a touchscreen interface that had a UI and it was changing up videos and it was changing up geometry. So you can see here in the main window for Touch Designer here that uh, the first thing that I built, uh, which was commented on by the Greg and the judges, was um, a switching routine for PBR texture. So I wanted to create 3D that would switch its texture between this rainbow anodized metal and gold texture with switches. And I wanted them to do that based on a kick drum that was coming in through TD Ableton. So to do that, you have to break out the different parts of the uh, substance texture using Substance Select to get out the base colors and the uh, and the reflectivities and things like that. So I broke them all out and put them all into switches and have the switches changing based on a kick drum that comes in from Ableton, which I'll show you from the second part of the challenge later. So, but now moving back out, so the second thing that I created was a switching uh, environment that switches between a bunch of uh, models, object models that I got from uh, this website, CG Access. Uh, they just give you thousands of models for whatever amount of money. And this is a switcher as well that was switching based on, uh, I think, some information that comes from TD Ableton as well. I did the TD Ableton integration in the second part. So uh, this here is a movie switcher. So I brought in a bunch of movies that I had shot at, you know, events like Movement and Mutech and uh, a couple other places. I think there was one from Disney World in there. And I created a switchy, switcher here that switches between the videos based on an input. And I think that that input was also uh, connected to TD Ableton at some point. I kind of just uh, freewheeled it as I went through, but I knew I wanted to create these elements to create basically a render that put them together, which you see here is the render pipeline with a geo and a PBR and light and camera. It's not the cleanest environment, but uh, here's the render, which is just showing the uh, 3D kind of flipping around right now. I don't really have the environment working perfectly. It's It was working well during the show, but right now it's not really quite working But because uh, I don't have the audio going. So I'll, I'll toggle over to Ableton here. Uh, so you can see in Ableton, I just created a very, very simple kind of beat that you can write within a few seconds. Uh, so just a simple 4-4 house beat in, uh, on a 909, which you can hear here and then uh, just a very simple bass to go along with it. And, and then uh, I think this is just like a string sound. So it gets something chiming and, uh, and it, it ended up being played where there, there were some audio issues, but this got played for a few seconds. So if I go back to the environment, um, here it is. So you can see there's a bit more activity here. See the, the colors on the bass are switching for the PBR material. The videos are switching up uh, and all these sorts of things. So that was the render pipeline. Now I, I wanted to build a UI, right? So I brought in some widgets, uh, just basically op viewers and 2D sliders. And so the challenge with the 2D slider is it only has X, Y, and I wanted to change RGB and alpha. So I did two for each, two for the, uh, to change the videos and two to change the uh, animations that were essentially being composited as you go down the line. And I think on the composite, I chose to use a top as the type of uh, operation to bring them together. And then, uh, oh, sorry, the a top composites a constant, which is being changed by the 2D sliders, RGB alpha. And then the other sliders are changing the RGB alpha of a constant that goes and uh, composites with the videos. So one composites with the animation, one composites with the videos, and you're in your UI, you can change the colors of the videos using your 
touchscreen, right? So uh, that went well, that part of it. I got that was done in the first challenge and we'll show you the UI here. So we'll go home and go up. And uh, when you go up, it takes you to the top level and you can see the UI. So basically all I had to do was launch this and you would be able to use the UI. You could uh, touch screen the little the 2D sliders and it'll change the colors of the videos. And, uh, and then they get composited and show within these op viewers within the, within the uh, interface. They see this little button down here. Okay, so this is the interesting thing. I built the UI in the first challenge and then right in the middle, they threw us a curve and had us use this Twitch chat uh, talks, which we brought in. And if you look inside the Twitch chat talks, there, are, there is buttons in here. So these buttons, when I drop the talks into my, because I plan to use the same environment from the first section and the second section, they broke my UI. They broke the 2D sliders. And uh, during the competition, I wasn't really able to debug it. So I'm wondering what is going on with this. And she sort of like, I said, okay, I don't care. I'm going to do the interactivity part. So my idea is how am I going to do this? And, and I had to, uh, like I was watching Alpha uh, Moon Base Berlin and a few other people sort of getting theirs figured out because I was watching the feed at the same time. And, uh, and then, uh, hold on, I'm just going to turn off this music for a second. <laughs> so yeah, the music, I wrote a couple beats. It was just like a, a break here and then something that builds it up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's enough of that. So, <laughs> and then, uh, so the ch challenge of integrating this Twitch feed when people typed in red or blue or whatever, I thought that that would be ideal if it did something to impact the color of the videos. So I tried to do that and I don't think I did a very good job of it. So basically I mapped the parameters over to a constant that was additionally changing the color of the video. But the problem with that was it did it so instantaneously so that you basically weren't seeing anything change. So I don't think I did so great on the uh, the integration challenge, but I think I did okay with the, the first challenge. And, uh, and I look forward to the next uh, challenge, which is the aesthetic challenge. And I am sort of spending this time going through lessons from folks like Kohui, how to improve PBR and his beautiful spectrum projects and some of the things from Electronaut and a, and a few other of the 300, 400 uh, community resources I've gathered up. And I'm trying to take the best from all of them to try to create something that's aesthetically pleasing and, uh, and nicely built. And, you know, within the challenge, you have to do it within an hour. So I'm going to try to do maybe something similar to what I've done, but, uh, you know, but different and more aesthetically oriented, uh, less touchscreen elements, less interactive elements, and just purely down to creating a beautiful render pipeline that maybe changes up. And uh, I'm interested in also using TD Morph, which is an amazing way of changing parameters. Uh, you know, I like to use TD Ableton. I like to, you know, use things like LFOs within the environment to sort of change things up. But TD Morph is incredible. So I have to sort of figure out what can I build and how much can I implement in TD Morph as a tool set for the aesthetic challenge. So it's in about a week's time and I look forward to that. And thank you very much.